Today we're going to do a brood inspection of a split that we've taken from this hive here. So this is a new colony that started and we're going to have a look, make sure they've got a good laying queen and make sure they're thriving. From the entrance and the activity of the bees, it looks like they're doing well, but we've got to get in there and check, and make sure the comb's nice and straight, make sure that there's no pests or disease issues in this hive. So we're going to take you through that. If you're new to beekeeping, then you'll need to get your smoker going. You'll need to clean your hive tool. You don't want to spread pathogens from one hive to another. And the next thing you do is blow some smoke into the entrance of the hive. So a hive like this, a couple of, a couple of gentle puffs in the entrance is all you need. And then you can place the smoker near the entrance so they, they get the, uh, the smell of the smoke and we'll keep them nice and calm. So putting the nozzle right in the entrance and a couple of puffs of smoke. Okay, I'm leaving the smoker going there. If you're uh, new to beekeeping, do bear in mind some people are quite allergic to, to bee stings. So keep that in mind for yourself and others and there's first aid information on our website. So I'm just doing up my jacket, make sure it's nice and closed here, and this flap is closed so the bees are less likely to get into my suit. Next we take the lid off. Now, if you're new to beekeeping, you may wish to wear your gloves. I recommend you wear your gloves until you're nice and comfortable with what's going on in your hive and you know the temperament of your bees. So the lid comes off. Our Flow Hive 2 has a wing screw here and there. So you make sure they're wound out to pull the lid off. If you've got questions at all, then please put them in the comments below. We love to hear what questions you have and also what you'd like to hear us cover next week. So put them in the comments below and we'll get to answering them a bit later. So the next thing to do is take the inner cover off. So this is the inner cover. Now, you need to get your hive tool and prise it between the inner cover and your hive box. And you go around to the corners, gently prising it up. And then lifting off your inner cover. So straight away, these bees look like they're doing well. They're already starting to connect comb from the frames up to the inner cover. And there's quite a lot of bees showing that it's probably time to put a super on this hive and start collecting some honey in the, in the flow hive super. So before you just put your inner cover down, have a little check. It's surprising when the inner cover's on top of the brood box, how often you find the queen just on the inner cover because you don't want to leave her orphaned from the hive. You wanna make sure your queen is in your hive. So I'm having a good look around, looking for that strutting motion of the queen. If you're not sure what queens look like, we've got plenty of videos of, of following the queen around. But they can be hard to spot. And now, just because I may have still missed her, I'm going to put this at the entrance in such a way that the bees can then walk up and back into the hive in case the queen does need to return. So I'm just putting it down here on the landing board so the bees can find their way back in. Next, choose a frame to inspect. Now there's a lot of bees here, there's a bit of comb build up. So what I'm going to do is just apply a bit of smoke where I want to start working, just gently like that. And that'll um, get some bees out of that area. So looking to see whether there's a, a comb we can pull up. Now this edge comb I can see is connected to the wall just slightly, but otherwise it's not too bad. So what I might do is just slide my hive tool down and cut off that comb that's connecting from the frame to the wall. Just like that. And there's another bit that's connecting this frame to that one. So we might just cut that off too. 
so that when you slide your frame out, you're less likely to damage any bees. Okay. So with naturally drawn comb, which this all is, sometimes the edge comb can be the one that's the most wonky. We haven't inspected this for a little while, so it'll be interesting to see how this looks. So with your hive tool, this is the one that comes with our suits and jackets. You put the hook under the end of the frame and then lift like that. So I'm levering against the edge of the box in this case. And when you move into the center, you'll be levering against the next frame. And look at that, one beautiful naturally drawn comb. So around the top and most of the frame, you've got honey, but I can see brood in the, uh, in the center at the bottom there. So the brood is the, uh, the capping is um, less opaque. So you can tell the difference, I'll just point it out. So the, the brood capping has a more sort of a chalky texture, whereas the honeycomb capping has a more slightly transparent look to it. So after a while you get really good at telling what brood looks like compared to honey. So here's the brood. There's some beautiful pollen there on the legs of that bee. And this is the very edge frame, so I wasn't expecting to see any brood on it. Typically there's honey on the edges and then brood and, and um, pollen as you get further in. So down the cells here. Now when you inspect naturally drawn comb like this, you have to be a bit careful because it can be delicate when it's first made. If you tip it over too far that way, it could start bending out of the frame until they've really connected it to the guides. This one's pretty strong, but when they're first connecting it, very gentle, make sure you keep it in the same plane as the frame. So looking down the cells, I can see that there is grubs and that there is eggs. So there's a uh, definitely a good laying queen here. It's definitely a good laying queen, which is fantastic. So that's exactly what we want to see. So you don't need to find the queen. It's fun too, but you don't need to because we can tell she's in there happy and healthy because of the nice brood that she's laying. So I'm having a quick look for the, the queen anyway before I put this frame down, because what I'm going to do is just lean it here up against the edge of the box. So if I take one frame out like that, that gives me room then to inspect the next frame in an easier way. So let's take a look at the next frame. And what I'm going to do first is just lever with the hive tool apart the, the two frames like this. Gently levering away. If you go sideways first, there's less likelihood of breaking the frame as you try and lift it. Okay, now the hook under the end, levering against the next frame and bring that up. Same on the other side. Okay. Lifting that frame out. And what do we have here? So again, we've got some beautiful honey around the edges and brood in this area. Look at that. So the brood as we get further towards the center is getting more and it's looking looking wonderful when you see it like that, like uh, big patches of nice looking brood. So while you're in here, what you're looking out for is abnormal things. Now, have a look at our pest and disease um, information to know what to look for, but basically you're looking for AFB, EFB, chalk brood, and then also pests like hive beetle, and, uh, and if you're in a continent with varroa mites, you'll have to do some management with the varroa mites also. 
Now that smoke is uh, just going a bit too strong, so <laughs> I'm gonna move that away. Um, so looking at this, very nice brood, very healthy looking colony. So I'm gonna put that back in. And I'm gonna move it across, giving us space to work on the next frame. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get to answering them soon. So again, hive tool between the frames. Hook under the end bar. And coming up, holding one end of the frame, the other end of the frame, and gently come up. So we've got honey around the edges and some brood down here. And also some honey interspersed and pollen, you can see. It's a nice orange pollen down the cells. Nothing looks amiss there, but straight away when I saw a little bit patchy between brood and not brood, my eye tuned in because if you get a uh, disease such as AFB, then it starts to look patchy, but then what happens is you get sunken dark cappings and often piercings in the cappings. So I'm looking out for that, making sure we haven't got AFB in this hive. The other side's looking nice and healthy here. Lots of, lots of brood. This hive's going to explode soon. There's so much brood in here that it's likely to really uh, build up nice and quickly. So we'll make sure we get this super on this hive soon. So you go through all the frames, checking and looking making sure everything's looking good and it's a really fascinating thing to do to to look into your hive and stare at the the wonder of the bees making this amazing comb and doing everything they need to do to keep this super colony alive Look at that, isn't that amazing? Okay, so we've got a few questions coming through. Leah, our customer support, our amazing um, staff member here is going to read them out. How long does it take for the bees to draw out the comb in the brood box? Okay, so that's a great question. It really depends on how many bees you've got in your hive and also on whether there's a, a good flow of nectar. If you've got a good flow of nectar, the bees can even fill a box like this in a week, fully drawn out combs. So, um, so that's when it's happening nice and quick and you've got a good flow on with a, a good strong, strong colony of bees. However, if there's not a good flow on or you've got a, a weak colony of bees, it might take much, much longer. So it really depends on the seasons and how strong your colony is. And when would you put the super on? So the time to put the super on the hive is when all of the combs are fully drawn out and there's lots of bees in your box. You can put it on earlier, but what you'll find is that you might get a little impatient because nothing will be happening in your super for a while. It's best to keep them contained as they, they fill out their box and it also keeps them, their, their climate a bit more controlled because they've only got a smaller area to look after. So if you let them fill out all the combs, build up their numbers, then it's the perfect time to put your super on. And Kaylee, I'd like to know how long does it normally take for the bees to make honey in the super? So again, that depends. The quickest I've seen it is, is, a, uh, is a week with, with, um, with the top box mostly full. The, um, the longest I've seen it is um, many, many months, and that depends on how strong your colony is 
and also on what the nectar flow is doing. So like any kind of um, farming or agriculture that really is weather dependent and um, also um, health dependent. Okay. If, if you detect that the bees um, are changing tune a little bit, then you might just like to add a little bit more smoke into the hive. And I'm actually going to add a bit more smoker fuel, which is just some of this garden mulch here, because it's running low. This can get hot at the top, so use your hive tool to close. A few puffs to get that new fuel going. And what you're looking for is nice, cool smoke. So sometimes when you really puff a lot, you'll even get flames coming out. That's not what you want to blow into your hive. You want to blow nice bellows of smoke. I'm just going to give them a little bit more, which will also get some out of the way while I inspect this next frame. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below. We'll keep answering. Belinda would like to know, when you harvest, does it affect the blue? So when you harvest honey, what that does is allow space in the hive for the bees to keep storing. So the, uh, our system, we design to be the least disruptive to the hive that we could. So we simply tap the honey from the hive without having to open the box. However, taking some honey away from the hive does change the dynamics in the hive. A lot of bees have to change and sometimes bees have to move out of the way to make room to repair the comb and, and that kind of thing. So um, it's uh, harvesting doesn't necessarily affect the brood but you um, you can get into um, the situation where, where um, sometimes uh, when you're harvesting you might spill a bit of honey in the hive and then the bees have to clean that up so you'll find some some bees um, in the process of doing that um, moving out to the entrance and things like that so while I'd say um, it doesn't really affect the brood um, the, the bees do notice that the honey is gone start repairing the, uh, the cells ready to start that process of producing nectar and honey again okay So, I'm going to lever out this next one. So what we're trying to do is go through every comb and make sure there's no signs of AFB or anything amiss. What we're wanting to see is nice, happy, healthy bees like this. Now here, it looks like they've um, have a look at what's going on on this frame. This frame's a little bit darker in the centre there and that's because this is one of the ones we've taken as a split from the other hive. So the longer the bees use their comb, the darker it gets. And this is still fine, but as it gets really dark and really thick, then we want to cycle that comb out of the hive by moving it to the, to the edge of the hive and eventually out when it's got no brood on it. So I'm looking down the cells. You can see eggs down the bottom, which is good. You can see a bee just chewing away the capping and hatching here. Just at the top of the hive tool there, you can see a bee chewing its way out. It'll be hatching out of the cell shortly and then start its chores in the hive of cleaning cells and and uh, then eventually moving on to to the outward tasks like foraging and collecting nectar it's a beautiful thing so barbara has an incredibly healthy productive hive and she's been harvesting 
quite a lot. She says the other day she harvested an almost full roof of honeycomb as the bees seem to move up there for extra room. Should be, she be worrying about the number of bees in the hive as it seems excessive that she's harvesting about two frames of honey per week? Okay, so Barbara's harvesting a, a couple of frames of honey per week, which is, which is fantastic and there's also comb being built in the roof which is also harvesting. Now if you if you get sick of of um, harvesting that honeycomb in the roof you can actually block the uh, the hole and and then not allow them into the roof. Having said that it sounds like your bees are really productive and really busy and uh, ready for either a split so you can start another hive or you could add, a, add another super or another brood box to give them some extra space. Um, if you don't, then there's a possibility they might uh, swarm, in which case you could catch the swarm or you might risk losing those bees if you, you're not around at the time when they swarm. So, fantastic. Sounds like your hive's really happy and healthy and um, it could be a good time to split make another hive. That's my favourite thing to do. Okay, so here we are. Just gently coming up, using the hive tool. Both ends and then lifting your frame out. Try not to squash any bees as you do so. Okay, another nice frame. Honey around the edges and some brood in this region. So after a while, you really get your eye in the difference between brood and this is, this is the, the worker brood here. There's another bee just starting to hatch out of its, out of its cell there. It's, um, beautiful thing we're watching that bee just chew its way out and start its life in the hive and then here you've got honey around the edges this is a drone bee here they're they're bigger and their eyes touch together in the middle so that's just crawling onto my hive tool now if you compare that to the worker bee they're quite different in size drone worker. So I'm also looking around to see if I can show you an example of drone comb. Drone comb uh, or drone cells look similar to these but they stick out in little nobles because the drones are bigger. Barbara is also asking, so if she added another super, where would she position it? Above or below the flow super? So if, um, if you're after maximising production, commercial apiarists usually under super, which is you place it underneath the other one, and that's probably the best thing to do. However, um, if you're not after maximising production you can also just place it on top and the bees will work it out as they will move some honey upstairs. Michael says hi from Belgium and he says is it possible that intruders like hornets may try to take over the hive and if so what would you do about it? Okay I'm glad we don't have hornets here in Australia that take over beehives but they're there, um, there is in, in other countries, so hornets can be a, a real problem. We had a friend in Japan that had their hive decimated by the hornets and um, there's all sorts of varied methods of what to do about it. If somebody's got a great method for controlling hornets, then put it in the comments below. Okay.
Chuck's asking, do some of the other bees help to chew out the new emerging bee? Um, no, they seem to chew their way out themselves. Slowly, slowly, like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Here we are again, some nice brood and honey around the edges again. So this hive's got plenty of great brood. It's gonna burst into action and fill that super. And there's some um, bees are bringing in beautiful pollen like this girl here with, with the yellow on her legs. So all the worker bees are uh, female and a really strong hive is capable of, of visiting 50 million flowers a day, which is absolutely extraordinary. Bees are the most extraordinary little insect. Okay. You can see waggle dancers going on on the comb, and that's the communication they have. Somehow, in the dark, in a crowded beehive, they do a dance called the waggle dance, and it's usually waggling their, their bottom back and forth, and about one second of waggle is equal to a kilometer of distance of where they might find the uh, pollen or nectar. And then they also tell the direction to the bees. They tell amazing amounts of information in the dark by dancing on the comb, which is completely fascinating. So if you've got questions, put them in the comments and we'll um, answer them. We're here to help you as you get started in your beekeeping. Chuck said he loved the Tooting Queen video. Okay, the Tooting Queen. We'll try and uh, find some more Tooting Queens. So queens make various noises for various reasons sometimes and they sound sometimes like a, a tooting noise and other times like a kind of a frog noise. And um, it's quite quite um, interesting and every time you go into the beehive you hear or see something new and different. Bill's from the Philippines and would like to know if it's okay to put a flow hive beside a mango orchard. Um, he's worried because the orchard, they spray the orchard. Okay, um, spraying of flowers can be quite detrimental to bees and pollinators so It'd be good to find out what they're spraying and when they're spraying. And if they are spraying uh, substances that are harmful to pollinators, then the, um, if you can't get them to stop altogether, which I know is a hard task, farmers um, do need to, to make their, their living, then try and get them to spray after hours. So, so in, the, in the very early morning before light or, or better um, in, the, in the evening. So, so um, the spray is going to be less harmful to bees in that next day. So um, uh, people who are spraying chemicals that are harmful to bees are not supposed to spray them in pollinating hours. Nick would like to know what is a super? That's a great question. So in a hive, if you take a look at uh, one of our hives, then it is typically made up of a, a bottom box, which is called your um, brood box. Oops, I was just a little not very careful. If you have a look at this, there's a sting there in my thumb. 
and I'm just going to scrape it sideways with the hive tool like that to, to get that out. So um, if you take a look at this hive here, the bottom box is our brood box. The top box is called a super. So any box you're collecting honey in is called a honey super. And you'll see if you look in here that we've got a beautiful amount of honey here in our flow frames already. And the bees, this hive could probably do with splitting. There's a lot of bees, there's a lot of honey in there. And it could certainly do with harvesting. Okay, so I'm going to start putting this hive back together now. And to do that, I'm gonna add a little bit more smoke and be careful where I put my hands. So the reason why I'm smoking here is I'm going to push the frames back together again. I don't wanna squash bees between them as I do that. So a box like this that has a little bit of extra space on the edge will have about that much space left and then the frames should be pushed together all the way like that so nice and slow if there's bees between so they have time to get out like that I'm just moving them back into the position try and just adding a little bit of smoke because they're getting a little agitated try and put them back in the same order you pulled them out in so the frame that i've got here on the edge was the first one we pulled out from this edge and all of the rest of them are still in order reason being is you don't want the bulge in one comb banging into another comb and then you end up with an area that can't be serviced by the bees and that's when you get pests like hive beetles taking an opportunity to lay eggs in that area where the bees can't herd them out of the way. Adam would like to know what breed of bees are in the hive. So these look like Italian bees. Italian bees typically have that um, golden appearance, whereas the Caucasian bees tend to be a, uh, a darker um, bee with more like a um, dark all the way was these have the golden here so when you're ordering bees you can you can order different strains from your queen breeder so you can order uh, Italians Caucasians Carnolians and all sorts of other breeds and and they'll have all sorts of descriptions on the things that their breed does well and 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 uh, you can choose what you want for your area often good to get advice from locals as well has um, a hive located deep inside a wall that he can't get to. Is it possible to get those bees out and re relocate them in a flow hive? Okay, that is possible and I have had success getting bees out of walls. However, it is a challenge. The two main methods are a cutout where you actually dismantle the wall, which is quite disruptive, and then be a process of, of getting sections of the brood and rubber banding or toothpicking through the holes in the edge of the frame. So you've got your brood then in an organized fashion that can be inspected. And that's one way to start. Um, however, I have had success also getting a cat and dog flea collar and making a small incision into the wall in a couple of spots and putting, putting a piece of flea collar in there. And at first I thought, oh, that didn't work. But then, then six weeks later, the bees bees absconded from the wall and left and never returned. Now, if you're quick enough, you could catch that swarm as they abscond. I was um, just too slow on my particular day and they, they flew over the hills and far away. But, um, but equally, there's a pretty good chance you could catch them if you're around um, at the time. So there is more methods where you can put uh, pipes from the wall into a brood box. And I have tried that as well. And then you can create what's called a one-way bee valve where you get a cone of mesh pointing in the direction you want them to go, which is towards your box. And you put that inside the pipe 
and the bees will go through the cone. It's a bit like a fish trap, but they find it hard to go back the other way. And then you get more and more bees in your box outside the wall. And hopefully you, um, you end up with the, with the queen finally going, where's all my bees and wandering out as well. And you've got the colony on the outside. Okay, just keep putting this hive back together. Good luck if you, if you try that, it's no easy task. Chuck would like to know, can you explain why you should scrape the stinger out instead of grabbing or pulling at it? Okay, we have some great first aid information on our website on how to deal with bee stings. If you want to know, know more about that, have a look. But the theory of, of scraping it sideways is the, um, the poison gland on the, on the stinger is still pumping away and if you squeeze it you might squash some more venom into your finger. Okay, I'm going sideways again. Phil is really interested in the flow hive and is wondering what should he do first? Or what does he need to do first to get started? Okay, the first thing to do is um, is decide, uh, have, have you got a great location? There's lots of bees keeping bees in backyards, on rooftops, um, in both the urban and rural areas. So um, find, find a good site. Um, have, a, have a look at our website. Have a, have a look and, and choose your hive. We've got ones from Western Red Cedar, which is uh, bells and whistles, top of the range, down, down to... Um, down to a selection of hives depending on on what hive you want and then um, once you've got your hive it's a process of assembling it and coating it and ordering your bees so once you've ordered your bees um, you'll also need to order a, a bee suit or a bee jacket and if you're brand new to beekeeping nice idea to get some help from somebody who's who's kept bees before and it's a process of putting the bees into your box. If you want to have a look at our, um, our YouTube channel, we've got plenty of videos on how to install bees into your box, whether it be a nuke or a package or taking a hive split or catching a swarm. So then you end up with this, which is a brood box full of, full of bees building their comb and, and hopefully happy and healthy. And then it's time to simply put your super on top, which we've also got videos on how to do and then the bees will start storing honey in your super and you can experience the beautiful joy of, of harvesting honey. Seasons do depend on whether you get um, honey and how much of it as well. Okay, now I'm sliding this last frame Look, look at all these bees just patiently waiting here. All the little heads poking up. It's um, so cool to watch them and what they do. All up to different jobs. Some of them fanning the hive. Some of them, some of them, uh, here's a grooming waggle here where, where, where the, the bees like waggling away to say, come, come and give me a groom. See that? Um, so. There's all this communication going on in the hive that um, is a fascinating thing to watch and, and learn about. Do we have time for one more question? We've got time for one more question. Um, Michael is asking if you can have different breeds of bees in the same apiary. And will the bees stay in their own hive? But if they mix, will they be still able to make honey? Okay, so absolutely. You can have different breeds of bees. So this apiary here is a mixture of um, swarms we've caught, of bees we've brought in from various breeders, from splits from my place. And, uh, and so it's a mixture of, of of Italian bees and also Caucasians and whatever other bees have mated with around in the, in the forest. So, so um, it's no problem, the bees do mix uh, and one hive will have multiple strains in it as the queen will go and mate with up to 15 drones on her mating flights. So, and then she's got 
enough sperm to last her six years of laying, so she'll be laying more than one type of bee. Okay, I'm gently just placing that lid back down. And the last thing we need to do is put the lid back on. So it's all looking good, there's no bees on top. And beautiful. It's a lovely thing to do. The hive's looking happy and healthy. So tune in again next week and we'll have something uh, interesting to show you. And also let us know what you'd like us to cover next week so we can make sure we're giving you the information you need to get started in beekeeping.